I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, we're looking at FPV cameras. And the goal here is to look at four of the most popular, maybe even the best, FPV cameras available and help you decide which one that you want to get. The cameras we're looking at today are the Runcam Eagle Micro, the Runcam Sparrow Pro, the Foxier Predator Micro V2, and for those of you who still like the older style of CCD sensor in your cameras, the Runcam Swift Micro. Stay tuned. Predator has a blue cast. I'm surprised to see that the Predator is looking like it's got better dynamic range. Look at the shadow detail on the Predator here compared to the Eagle, which I usually beats it. This is the Eagle Micro, which has adjustable dynamic range, and the dynamic range is on three, which is basically 50%. I'd like to see the Eagle with the dynamic range turned up. Prior Eagles have had a higher dynamic range and less contrast. I've always argued that the Eagle has better dynamic range than the Predator on default settings. That doesn't seem to be the case for the Micro Eagle anyway. The Swift is putting in a pretty good showing to be honest. The Swift looks like it's having more detail than the Sparrow. The Sparrow looks to have a slightly softer image. If we look like here in the grass, you can, it's a little hard there, in the Swift image, the, you can see some details in the grass and in the, in the sort of bushes that the Swift is looking a little softer. This is the test I've been using for shadow detail and dynamic range. Just have a look up underneath the porch here. Definitely seeing more saturated greens in the sparrow. Predator is looking like it's getting a little bit more image resolution. But look, if you look at the trees, it seems like we're getting we're resolving more detail in the Predator. I can definitely see a lot of image noise in the Eagle as I move and look at the, the tree branches. One of the things they did on the Eagle Micro is they added the ability to adjust the dynamic range. So I've noticed that, and on, on previous cameras, the dynamic range was really cranked up. So you got a desaturated, a, a low contrast image, but with great shadow detail. On this one, check it out. We go image, wide dynamic range three. Now watch four, five, six. Notice how much of the shadow detail goes up. So I kind of want to show the capabilities of this camera. I actually, I kind of like it with a little bit lower wide dynamic range. I've come to like that, but I feel like, you know, the, that's one of the strong points that really makes the Eagle stand out is the excellent dynamic range. So let's just crank that up. The other thing I do on all my Eagles is I turn the sharpness down. Now here the default is six, and I like to turn it down just a little, and it softens the image slightly, but let me turn it way, way up, and you can see Oh, we're getting, look at the pickets on the fence, how we're getting this kind of uh, distortion. Uh, I've called it more distortion before. I'm not actually sure that's what it is. But this, see, this is not good. So now this is zero sharpening and it's a super soft, almost looks out of focus. And I find that around four seems to give a good balance of not too much digital noise, but still a reasonably sharp image. There's still some digital noise, but that's how I like it. Oops, I've got a bug on me and I jerked my hand. What happened? When I notice on the Sparrow, I've done a little bit of reading also about what other people have done. Other people have turned the sharpness down. We do get a little bit of digital sort of shimmer. Let's see if we turn this way down. See, now the image is getting super soft. I think we'd all agree that that's not as good. Let's just bring that slightly back. Now it's, it's higher. 65. 
A little bit of the digital shimmer is coming back. At 30, I feel like the shimmer has been noticeably reduced. The image is also visibly softer. There's a lot less detail, like if we look in the tree branches here. I'm looking at the edge of the tree's branches, like right about here-ish. I'm looking at how much detail is resolved there against the, the sky. Now we're starting to get a little bit of fringing, of white fringing around the edge there. So let's say 45. And so let's see if we think that's better. We'll take that down. Now as far as hue and color gain goes, the color gain on this is quite high, I think. Especially compared to something like the Swift, it's giving kind of a very saturated image. I kind of like it, but some people may consider it to look a little more artificial, and so they may prefer to bring the color gain down. So let's try that. And everything else looks honestly really good. I only almost wonder if by adjusting brightness and contrast we could get just a little better shadow detail out of it. See, that's, that's clearly bad. See, now we're starting to... This is not good. This is not improving shadow detail for sure. Now I'm going to have to reset. Well, color gain of 40, sharpness of 45. I just don't know if we could get better dynamic range. If we turn down the contrast, do we get... No, see, we don't get shadow detail back by turning down the contrast. Nothing seems to... So that seems to be what we get. So this is something that I've never been able to really fix on the Predator, which is the blue cast. So I'm not sure how much improvement we'll be able to make here. Also, the Micro Predator seems way noisier in the shadows than I remember the uh, Big Predator being. I wonder if it's the exact same sensor or what. Now here, here, we're doing okay, but we still have the blue cast. We turn the sharpness down on the Sparrow to 45. If the Sparrow and the Predator have the same image sensor, then we'll do the same for them. We're having a lot of trouble with lens flare here, I think because of the smaller lens on the Micro Predator. Now see, I can definitely see the the background detail is getting much softer now and out of sort of almost out of focus. It seems like around 75 or 80 is about where it wants to be. Feels like the color gain is not that far off. I'm looking at the grass mostly. Yeah, this is not doing great. This is a micro predator. Alrighty, well. Now we can definitely, I think, see a big, we can see here, the eagle's wide dynamic range is definitely showing what it's capable of now. If you look at the shadow here on the eagle versus the predator, you can see a big difference in just a, in terms of the predator. If you look at the fence, it's just this kind of red blotch. You're losing a lot of detail. The lens is not helping the predator. Let me try and turn a little bit to get the sun out of the lens a little bit. But overall, I think the eagle's dynamic range is really showing itself. And what I like about the eagle is that it can you can adjust it. If you don't like this wide dynamic range, you can you can just turn it down, uh, and you can get the more contrasty image. The sparrow has a little bit of a color cast. The eagle appears to have more neutral colors. The sparrow is doing okay at the dynamic range. Again, looking at the shadow detail in the, in the fence, for example, and under the trees. But the eagle definitely has more. If you look at the trees here, you can see way more detail in the eagle than in the sparrow. I think there's more detail in there. Now the swift, the swift is a more contrasty image and is certainly losing. You can barely see the fence at all in the swift's image. And the Swift is also having a lot of blowouts on the sun. White areas are completely blowing out, like if I hold the camera right here. Look in the Swift's image right here at the fence, or the, the back wall. Notice all the other cameras, the CMOS cameras, are having no trouble with that, whereas the Swift is struggling to expose for the whole image. So if we look here, the Foxeer's blue cast, of course, is 
obvious. As we rotate, we can look at shadow detail under the trees here and see how each of them are doing. Now with the sun in the sky, they're all kind of getting blown out. And actually, the swift seems to be doing a pretty good job. The shadows are not quite as dark here on the swift. It's interesting. And as we rotate, we can look at the, any sort of uh, aliasing artifact, any screen door effect on the CMOS cameras. The Swift, of course, doesn't isn't going to have that. It isn't subject to that. We can look at the pickets of the fence and see if they're rendered cleanly or with any artifacting. And here, if we look up at the trees, we can look for the digital noise. The digital noise should be somewhat improved on the Sparrow and the Eagle because we turned the sharpening down. Maybe the Fox here too. I think we turned it down. And of course, the Swift doesn't have that problem at all. The Sparrow still has really green greens, even though we turned down the color saturation a little bit. I think the Eagle has the most natural colors of them all. And yet, with the Eagle, I've seen a lot of cameras, uh, a lot of uh, when I watch pilots fly, where the Eagle also has, seems to have really vibrant colors. It, it seems to be really vibrant without sort of going into an oversaturated, uh, unnatural look. I don't necessarily dislike that unnatural look, but I know many people probably would. Again, here we can see the Swift struggling with the exposure, overexposing the barn. We got this big white splotch on the Swift. Uh, there, there, there it is, getting blown out, whereas the other cameras are all exposing just fine. This is the wide dynamic range of the CMOS cameras showing its strength. It looks like the Sparrow is sagging. Oh no, the Sparrow's falling down. Stand up, Sparrow. There we go. And we'll go into the back of the barn and we'll see how they do in this area. Yeah. with their adjusted settings. Now the Eagle is really showing its dynamic range compared to the Sparrow, which has much darker shadows. The, the Predator is still doing pretty good, although I feel like I can see just a little more detail in the Eagle here. You can see the white parts of this gravel, whereas on the Predator, we're losing some of that into the shadow. And the Swift is actually doing not a bad job in this exact lighting condition at the shadow detail. Although again, if you look at the Swift, you can see, you can see the white speckles of the gravel. So it looks like there's detail in the shadow, but you're, there's, the shadowed parts are just kind of dark. Whereas in the Eagle, we get sort of gradients of detail there that aren't there on the Swift. So the Swift is, it's interesting, it's showing this sort of white and black which might still be useful as a as a pilot. In fact, some people prefer that over sharpened, like with a lot of edge detail. The Eagle, I think, has a more nuanced picture though. I've got one more test I'm gonna show you, which is the low light test. Uh, how do these cameras handle when it's like getting to be twilight and not, there's not as much light there. But before I do that, let me just give you my conclusions then you can go out on that test. The Foxier Predator is not doing really well. The blue cast to me is really distracting and overwhelms any of the other good things it might be doing. I've seen people's flying a Predator. I've seen people's image in my goggles and gone, oh, that looks really good. What camera are you flying? And they say Predator. And I say, really, what have you done to it to make it look so good? I cannot get it that blue cast to go away. Maybe it just depends on the exact lighting conditions we're in or whatever, but just not cutting it for me. And before you go down to the comments, this is, and I'm double checking, this is a Foxier Micro Predator V2, which is supposed, I thought the V2 was supposed to have better color and fix the blue cast issue. I just don't feel like the Predator is, is living up to its potential. Let's just say that. The Sparrow, on the other hand, is really delivering on the things that a lot of people, I think, turn to the Predator 4, which is they like the CMOS image, they like the higher resolution and the better dynamic range, but they don't like the digital artifacting, the, the noise and so forth. The Eagle, though, is still, I gotta tell you, my personal favorite. The Eagle's dynamic range 
just stomps anything out there. And I feel like as a pilot, being able to see the shadow details, and I just like the way the eagle handles the colors. It's not, it's not a, I just, I just like the eagle image. I feel like if you're looking at the eagle image, if you're looking at the images like on a wall, if you're looking at a television image, then you would you wouldn't like it the best. But for what I need when I'm flying, which is to be able to see the objects that I'm flying around and hopefully trying to avoid flying into, I think the eagle is is the best. That'll just whether you agree with me, I think will just depend on how distracting and how unpleasant you find the digital sharpening in the eagle's image to be. There you go. What about the Swift? What about the Swift? Well. The Swift did really well. Uh, it seemed to do mostly worse in the highlights. It seemed to be doing actually pretty well in the shadows compared to the others. And if you if you really prefer that style of image, uh, you could certainly, you're not gonna go wrong by going with the Swift. I actually have another video I did where I compared all of the lenses that the Micro Swift can come with, which are the 2.1, 2.3, and it's also the, the little micro-sized M8 thread lens that comes on the Swift Micro V2. Uh, I'll put a link to that down in the video description if you really want to get a Swift that'll help you figure out which one is going to be the best for you. Links to all of these products are down in the video description and if you value the work that I put into doing this and the work was was it was, it was kind of a lot of work but hey <laughs> if you value that uh, if you want to go get one of these cameras go ahead and use one of those affiliate links I sure do appreciate it, it helps me out it doesn't cost you anything. Let's do the low light test. What I did for this was I just set the cameras out and I just let the DVR record as the sun went down and you'll be able to see how they, I'll, I'll fast forward it for you because it's like two hours of footage. Um, for some reason, I can't find the Swift's footage for this. I'm going to go back. I'm going to look on my hard drive again. I'm sure I recorded it, but it's just not there right now. So we're just going to be looking at the CMOS cameras and, uh, you know, hey, there you go. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.